So where have we gotten? We asked how face perception develops and what is the initial state. And we found impressive perceptual abilities present within a few days. Um, and some of those look like they might be face specific, like that inversion effect, but it's not totally nailed. There are alternative accounts of all of these. So we don't yet know whether those impressive abilities that are present in discriminating one face from another um, are necessarily part of a specialized face system or just the result of your general shape processing system. Everybody get that? OK. Um, and we don't know that much about the nature of those early representations or how they change. OK. After, uh, after birth, we talked about perceptual narrowing that happens between 6 and 12 months. But basically, most of what you want to know about what's changing after that is really not very well characterized yet. And again, really the question we want to know is not just what happens, not just description of stuff, but what are the causal mechanisms that wire up our face perception abilities. And as I've mentioned, it's really hard to unconfound these things. Okay. But I want to mention, I probably only have time one of the, for one of these. There's three different ways to unconfound maturation, that is like, you know, you can think of it as genetic, biological, autopilot of development. This is programmed, it's going to happen, like puberty, almost independent of what you do, versus stuff that's <laughs> learned based on your sensory input and your experience. OK. Very hard to unconfound in humans, um, but there's at least one really cool method. And that method is called controlled rearing. OK, so let me tell you about one of my all-time favorite ever experiments. OK, a guy named Sugita in Japan did the following amazing study. He wanted to know which of these face perception abilities, these abilities to distinguish one face from another, depend on experience with faces. So he raised baby monkeys for 6, 12, or 24 months without ever letting them see a face. Now, don't panic. The, the baby monkeys did not have a horrible experience. They were raised very tenderly by human caregivers who simply had hoods over their heads. OK? So they got lots of mammalian contact, lots of nurturing, lots of body contact, lots of sight of hands and bodies, just not faces. OK? They had very rich visual environments. They had lots of toys in their cages and lots of things to play with and lots of stuff to play with and see and think about. So they had normal visual experience except for face input. Everybody got that? Yes. Ah, uh, yes, exactly. So there weren't other monkeys in the cage for them to see. Yeah. OK. So um, what Sugita then did was use this uh, habituation of looking time method to ask the monkeys, at the end of this deprivation period, what could they see? OK, habituate them to one face, test them on another face. Are they dishabituated? Do they detect that that's a new face? OK, that's a way of measuring their ability to discriminate faces. OK, and the finding is on the very first day of testing, those monkeys were no like normal monkeys of their age raised with faces, equally good at discriminating faces. And although I didn't put all the details up here, the face discrimination tasks they used were extremely subtle. When you look at the figure of the faces, your first reaction is, oh, those are all the same. And then you look more closely. And you're like, oh, yeah, they are different, right? There's no hair that can be used to discriminate. And these baby monkeys were able to do the, the task equally well to normal, normally raised monkeys. Wow. That really makes it look like the whole face discrimination ability requires not just, it doesn't even require um, you know, tuning. It doesn't require any experience. Everybody see how this is like a really radical result. This, this result like rocked my whole sense of things. Like I have a penchant for nativist views, but this was so extreme that even I was like, what, really? All right? It's, it suggests that the whole thing is innate. You don't need any experience whatsoever to have normal adult-like face discrimination abilities. You should be very surprised by this. Everyone's surprised by this. The field is so surprised by this that they kind of ignore it because nobody can really handle it. <laughs> um, OK. Uh, oh, and I'll just say, without giving you the details, because it's a little bit complicated, though very cool, is that in subsequent studies, once these monkeys were first exposed and tested on their face discrimination ability using the habituation of looking time method, the experimenters then gave them exposure to 
just human, human faces, actual humans, or just monkey faces, actual monkeys, for some period of months, and then tested them again, and they found perceptual narrowing. Namely, the monkeys that were then, after this long period of deprivation, exposed to one species, um, uh, sorry, I left something out. Originally at testing, they were equally good at human faces and monkey faces. Okay, you then put them in experience with just, just monkeys or just humans. And what happens is they don't gain new abilities, they lose the ability to discriminate the unexperienced species. Okay, and that was lasting. So some of the monkeys, for example, were deprived up until two years, tested, behaved like normal adult monkeys on both human faces and monkey faces, were then put in environments with only human faces for a period of months, tested again, and then could do human faces, not monkey faces. Okay, perceptual narrowing. And then amazingly, those monkeys were then put in an enclosure with lots of other monkeys, and a year or two later, they still couldn't recognize uh, monkey faces. So that's a lot like, you know, you take me and you plunk me down in India and I have to learn whatever those Hindi consonants are, I forget what they are, and I couldn't say them anyway because I can't hear them. Uh, no matter how hard I try, I'm not gonna learn those things. It's a bummer, but it's true. Perceptual narrowing at a certain point gets locked in, you can't unlearn it, even with lots of experience. And the same was true here. This study suggests that a huge amount of the face system is independent of experience to get you to the part where you can discriminate faces, and yet there's still sensitivity to experience after that in the form of perceptual narrowing. A complex but fascinating picture. Okay. Um, all right, so reaction to this, like, really? Um, and then a second reaction is, okay, how do we know that this amazing ability isn't being carried out by a generic shape system, right? D does this tell us that it's the specialized face mechanisms that, that have developed fully without experience? Well, we don't exactly know. So the people who cannot handle this result, who are now in the grip of other results, I'll tell you shortly, which seem very much at odds with these data, um, discount this result by saying, okay, fine, they did really well at that habituation task. In fact, they did as well as normal face-reared monkeys, but they weren't using a specialized face system. Okay, they were using their general ability to recognize objects. These monkeys grew up with all these objects. They can recognize objects, they can see shapes, and they use their general shape system to do faces. Maybe. 